All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Is everybody cool? Everybody clean? Are you crisp? Are you feeling yicky yicky? You already know the rest. Let's talk. Hey, a few months ago, I mentioned that they were going to be cracking down on hours any way that they possibly could crack down on hours. And my man, uh, mailman Nick, has gone into full depression mode. We got to check up on him because of the hours. He's losing his damn mind right now. I'm just kidding. That's my dogs. But there are a lot of people that tend to exist on overtime hours and... Good thing is we're coming into the holiday season, which means that we'll probably get a bunch of overtime. Well, I can't say a bunch, but there will be overtime available. They allot it into the figures, you know, for every area that you're in. And they have a cap on how many should be and et cetera. This has nothing to do with the management trying to hold the hours back, but it, it, they they do a lot a certain amount. Um, but here's the thing. They want to cut back on the hours uh, for many reasons. And I'm citing an article from uh, GovExec where uh, the USPS has introduced an initiative to reduce overtime hours and creep overtime. Now, creep overtime tends to accumulate little bits and pieces, little bits and pieces, little bits and pieces. And what ends up happening is people end up getting pulled into the office, but we're going to get into these different points. We're going to talk about uh, what the initiative is. Uh, We're going to speak about the consequences and the data, as well as what happens when the discipline and how the discipline works. All right. So before we get started, uh, there it is. You already know, Jay, come up with these funky shirts. Tina be hooking them up right below me. Whatever you want, you see something, let her know. I like this one. (laughs) We got to change this culture. Everybody's uh, so edgy lately. Um, Also, new people that are watching, please check my video description for all your postal needs. The holidays are coming. We have uh, the loans for feds, loans, no credit checks. They're in there. There's... uh, banks that we use there anything that i've used that can help me move forward put that in the video description below Uh, purchasing power i always use them every year just because i have so many grandkids to to get christmas gifts and vacations and all that other foolishness um but yeah let's 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 get into the video let's get into the video I have to change my tone up and down and be animated because it kind of grabs the attention. I've noticed that, you know, the people that watch me watch a little bit longer because I'm not monotone. This is very early for me. I just finished working out. All right. Man. Introduce the new initiative to reduce overtime hours and creep. Overtime. Here are five key points as the initiative and its potential consequences. Number one, strict adherence to schedules. Y'all already know how this schedule thing works. USPS has mandated that all network plans and delivery trips must occur on time. Late trips, would off, which often lead to overtime, are no longer authorized. This change aims to streamline operations and reduce unnecessary labor costs. MVS, they already know how this works. MVS, which is uh, my initial craft, we get the scanners. We got to scan things. We got to put it on the truck. For those that are in transportation, they understand this. I'm not going to talk to gibberish because other people won't. 
but this there's a long delay because the truck drivers have to wait for stuff to come from the mail handlers which usually comes from the back from the clerks as well as all the machines and it's a game between which department sends the stuff out late but they're emphasizing no more late trips um, number two is elimination of overtime the initiative includes a directive to eliminate overtime all mail that cannot be delivered within regular working hours will be held for the next day. All right, yeah, this is weird. The policy is expected to save USPS significant amounts of money with initial estimates suggesting savings around 200 million. Number three, operational efficiency. By addressing the root causes of the delays and efficiency, USPS aims to improve overall operational efficiency. This includes ensuring that mail is properly logged and distributed the next day if it cannot be delivered on time. That's why when people bring mail back to the stations, they got to let the supervisor know and usually they do a scan thing when it comes to the parcels and say, okay, not delivered or they make up an excuse, unable to deliver, whatever foolishness they do. The cultural shift. Hmm. The initiative represents a cultural shift. Cultural shift within the USPS, moving away from past practices that allowed for more flexibility in delivery times. Y'all remember when express mail used to have to be at somebody's house by noon? Then it went down to two o'clock, then it went down to four o'clock. Now, shit, get it there that day, whenever. Employees are now required to start and finish their routes on time, which may be challenging, but is necessary for long-term health and stability of the post office, it says. Impact on employees. These changes have been met with mixed reactions from employees. Some have expressed concerns about potential for increased workload and the difficulty of seeing mail left behind. People actually care about the mail, hate to see it left behind. However, USPS management believes that these changes will ultimately lead to more efficient and sustainable operation. I don't know. I think they got to change a lot of the supervisors and the way they address people. But that's another video for another day. You've probably seen a hundred of them. Um, now, there are a bunch of people that hate overtime. They want to do their eight hours and go home. There's a bunch of people that love overtime. I'm not addressing either of you. I'm just telling you what it is. Uh, so, because obviously the comments are going to be mixed. People know, well, raise our pay rate. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about what's going on right now. Uh, okay, so the consequences and the data, this is what we always look for, the data, the facts behind it, the financial savings, the initiative is projected to save USPS about 200 million by reducing overtime and, and improving efficiency. The mail delays, there may be an initial increase in mail delays as the new policies are implemented. We see this all the time. You read it on the comments. You see it in Texas. You see it in Virginia. You see all over delayed mail. However, USPS expects that the delayed mail volumes would decrease significantly over time as operations become more efficient. This is true. If you see the big picture and you've worked, I know transportation gets to see more of everything because we're not only at the plant, but we're at the stations. We're doing the drop-offs and the pickups. So we get to see a bigger picture. And yes, uh, it does tend to pick up on certain days. We get to see how, how much mail volume comes back. We can generally see it because we are loading trucks with the equipment. Now, if you say, typically we load 30 pieces of equipment on a trailer, and then two months, you know, a year down the road, we're only loading 28 pieces. And then, you know, a year down the road, we're down to, you know, 20 pieces. You know that that specific station is not bringing out or pumping out as much mail as it used to. They collect data off of that. That's, that's how that works. Um, and last but not least, when it comes down to it, is employee morale. Hmm. The shift in policy may impact employee morale, as some workers may find it difficult to adjust to new schedules and a site of undelivered mail. Um, the changes are part of a broader effort by USPS to redesign its business model, 
Here we go with the business part of it and ensure its future as a world-class service provider. <laughs> I, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I work for the place, but there's a lot that's got to change. Uh, now, here's the part that will disturb a couple people is the discipline, the disciplinary action for employees who do not adhere to the new overtime and scheduling policies. And uh, I heard on other channels, they're talking about, you know, these people are barely being nitpicky or micromanaging. Another story for another day. Uh, USPS management has emphasized the importance of compliance with these new directives to ensure operational efficiency and cost savings. Employees who consistently fail to follow the new guidelines will face consequences such as Number one, verbal warnings. Initial, initial non-compliance will result in verbal warnings from supervisors. This is what it is. I'm not one of those that say, man, they're just bigger on my back. Why did mess with me? I'm just telling you what it is. Written warnings. This is kind of the process it goes through. Continued failure to adhere to the policies will lead to written warnings being placed in the employee's file. That kind of sucks. I don't sign nothing without your shop stewards there. The next step up would be suspensions. Repeated violations will result in temporary suspensions without pay. Typically, unions will get your money back, but, you know, that's a pain in the butt when you're trying to pay a bill. Last but not least... About two months ago, we spoke about the word termination. They are trying to get ducks in a row and get things to labor and, and figure out the termination. Termination in extreme cases, persistent non-compliance could lead to termination of employment. These measures are intended to reinforce the importance of the new policies and ensure that all employees contribute to the overall efficiency and sustainability of USPS operations. Um, being in the position that I'm in, I see a lot of new hires when it comes down to the carriers. There are still stations that have a lot of carriers that, you know, they're still working late, but then they start bringing all the new people in and it's a high turnover rate, but we're not there yet. But when they bring the new people in, it takes, obviously, it takes the workload off of some of the people that have been working there for a long period of time. It's kind of what the assistants are, you know, the CCAs and the PTFs, flexible, PTF, part-time flexible. You got to be flexible with your hours. Assistants, they're there basically to cover the routes of the career or cover the extras that the careers have. We're not talking about all the numbers involved in it and who doesn't do what and who do. We're just talking about the facts. That's what that's what they are there for. So once you have an overtime, a regular employee that's no longer needed for overtime because they have enough help to alleviate that, that reduces the overtime. Yes, an employee may cost more initially, but that'll take away from the workload. They are able to formulate eventually another route for that person and make the routes what they're supposed to be, eight-hour routes. I know that, that nobody really likes that, which again works towards what we have coming up in the future with all of this, you know, the package deliveries and all the new vehicles and the direction that the post office is currently going in. So it's like, you know, they're, they're training the military guys to come up and step up. They need to have enough people, enough workers in place in order to execute this huge change that they have coming. Now, you can check out a lot of this because this is what the APWU has been fighting for. This is what the NALC has been fighting for. You've heard me talk about it before. Staffing, staffing, staffing. Now that they're bringing staffs in, this is what the unions have been fighting for. More staff, mail handlers as well. People are starting to complain. Damn, I don't, I ain't got enough money because I live off of overtime. If there's no overtime, what's the purpose of being here? Well, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So you, then you got employees that say, man, if I'm not getting overtime, I'm calling out or I'm doing X, Y, Z. Bottom line is... Those are stories and topics for another day. We're just providing you what, what the government, our employer has put in place for your management 
uh, to start looking on and cracking down on when it comes down to us and how we work. The creep overtime as well as the excessive hours. And that's why they have these unrealistic time schedules. Be back here. Blah, 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 blah. Make sure there's no idle time. All of that comes into a play. Y'all call it standby time. I don't know what you guys call it as carriers. But all of that, all of that, they, they have monitors of everything, which also goes into effect with the, with the, with the geo trackers that they have on the vehicles geo trackers people are yanking them out and they're playing with this stuff. don't go messing with that stuff man don't touch it because the moment they find out that you disconnected one of those geo trackers man that can be your job now you're tampering with a government vehicle so they have the scanners now they have the vehicles they are trying to collect data on everything why is this person stopping 55 times when the other person only stops 35 times this person does this this person does that they collect data over a long period of time amongst different people and different you know grades and that's what they put forward and put back out to you all right i hope this information is helpful for you to kind of understand why your management is acting crazy the way they are doesn't justify it but this is what it is again I, article is cited in gov exec you can look it up um and oh shit you can just look around you when you go to work this is what's happening this is jh hopefully this information was good for somebody change the culture or embrace the suck it's your choice and i'm out Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.